Good morning and warmest welcomes to Trinity Episcopal Church on Galveston Island. I'm the Reverend Jimmy Abbott, the priest here at Trinity Galveston, and I'm so glad that you have joined us for this special service of online prayer, worship, and fellowship. As we go along, if you're new to Trinity Galveston, I invite you to say so there in the comments. Also, if you have a prayer request or anything going on in your life that you would like to share with us as the Trinity community, I also invite you to put that in the comment box so that we can pray together and pray with you. A number of things are going on here in the life of our church. If you haven't signed up for our weekly e-messenger, I'd encourage you to do so. You can sign up for that weekly newsletter by going to trinitygalv.org and signing up for our e-messenger email newsletter. That's the best way for you to stay in touch with what is happening here at Trinity Episcopal Church. Our service this morning begins with a reading from Psalm 119, and I invite you to pray along with me with the words on your screen. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments, that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways remain so direct, that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame, when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart, when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes, do not utterly forsake me. Our lesson today is from the 12th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark. One of the scribes came near and heard the Sadducees disputing with one another. And seeing that Jesus answered them well, he asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more imp important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. In the state of Texas, it is illegal to milk someone else's cow. It's a law on the books. In the state of Texas, it is illegal to shoot buffalo from the second story of a hotel. Now, I've got some questions about this one. I really want to meet the guy who did this because I bet he is a character. Now, as any good lawyer will tell you, there are only laws about these things because people were actually milking someone else's cows and shooting buffalo from the second floor of hotels. You don't make laws forbidding things that people aren't doing. If people never stole, we wouldn't have laws against theft. If people always drove safely, we wouldn't have speed limits. Laws are only made because people are actually doing those things that we've decided to outlaw. And so one of the scribes asks Jesus, which commandment, which law is greatest? Of all the bad things people are doing, which is the worst? Is it murder, adultery, lying, cheating, stealing? But Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. 
and love the Lord God with everything you have. So think about this with me. This means that Jesus knows people back then weren't loving their neighbors and they weren't loving God. You don't have to say love your neighbor if you're already loving your neighbor. See, I think one of the worrisome trends in modern social life is that we are always talking about how divided we are, how bad things are. We'll say things like, if only we could get back to a time when we just got along. But tell me, when was that? When was a time that everyone loved their neighbors as themselves? I'm a history guy. You know that. I've spent my whole life studying people who hated each other, which has been the entirety of human existence. And when exactly was it that we all loved the Lord God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Not even Adam and Eve, who knew God in the flesh, loved the Lord with such dedication. And by the time Jesus says this, this commandment has been around for centuries. That's because for thousands of years, people have not loved their neighbors or God. If the Bible had to tell people to love each other and love God way back then, let's not kid ourselves. We're not doing it now. Love does not come naturally to us. Now, Jesus' response is called the summary of the law, but notice how it begins. Hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Hear. Listen. Pay attention. Check this out. The commandment begins with Jesus demanding that we hear him. Hearing, then, is the path to love. Listening, hearing, is the first step in opening our hearts. After hearing that the Lord is one, then we're prepared to love our neighbors and to love God. But it's rooted in hearing and in listening. So let's start with loving our neighbors. We have to listen to them. We have to hear them. But Jesus knows that we don't actually pay attention to what he or anybody else is saying. Instead, we're formulating our response as they are talking. Or we just go ahead and talk right over the other person. See, we've modeled our conversations off those terrible political cable news shows to which we've all become addicted. We've got our ideas. And we are certain that if only we talk enough, with enough conviction, then we can get other people to our side. And then when they don't come to our side, we classify them as a difficult person. Well, I got news for you. You might just be the difficult person. Lord knows I've been that person before, and it's usually been because I'll speak, but I won't listen. You know what I'm talking about. We say, well, if only they would use some common sense, they would see it my way. But we don't actually listen to them. If we did listen, we might hear that they are using their common sense. Common sense means different things for different people. Being a human can be so inconvenient sometimes. We speak, but we do not listen. And yet our Lord commands us to hear, to listen, and then to love our neighbor. It's such incredible wisdom. You're not going to learn anything if all you're doing is talking. You're not going to grow into a better person if you never open your ears to what someone else might be saying. The path to love, the path to wisdom is through our ears. So I'm going to make this real practical. This week, you're going to be in a conversation with someone. And they're going to say something that you disagree with. They're going to say something that bothers you. Now, instead of talking past it, instead of pretending that you didn't hear it, this week I challenge you to invite that other person to, mo- to talk more about what they said. If they say something you disagree with, say, tell me how you came to believe that. Or say, I want to hear more of your thoughts on that. 
It'll be weird. It'll be hard. But that's what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. If you think that your opinions are important, then the other person does too. And if you do that, if you invite them to talk more and it gets weird, don't blame me. It was Jesus who told you to love your neighbor as yourself. I'm just the messenger. I'm in sales, not management. And let's do this thing together. I promise to do it too. I'm going to try to speak less and listen more. And through that listening, I'm going to try to open my heart to hear them, to really hear what they have to say. And the same goes with loving God. The path to loving God runs through our ears. This is why there is always silence in the Bible when God shows up. Think about it. Elisha knows God in the sheer silence at Mount Horeb. Jesus goes to pray by himself for 40 days. Like a lamb before its shearers is mute, Jesus doesn't open his mouth even when he's spit on and whipped and crucified. St. Paul, perhaps the greatest talker in the Bible, spends three years learning and listening before he goes off preaching about Jesus and starting churches. God is in the silence. So this week, when you're running up against a difficult decision, I challenge you to hear, to listen, to pay attention. Spend some time in silence and listen for what the Lord God would have you do. I know that your brain will want to fill that dead air. You'll want to turn on the TV or scroll through Instagram. Resist that urge. Be quiet, listen for God, Open your ears so that the Lord God can open your heart to love. It's in the silence that you will discover the Lord's presence in your life. It's not what we naturally do. That's why God tells us to do it. But listening is the way to wisdom, to love, and to faithfulness. Open your ears. Open your hearts in love. Because that's what Jesus did. Jesus never told us to do anything he wouldn't do himself. And the same is true here. He loved his neighbors, and he loved the Lord with everything he had. Jesus listened. He listened to the poor, to the sick, to the hurting, to the lonely. He listens to me, and he listens to you. And because he hears, because he really hears, he has empathy. And from that empathy comes love. Enough love to open wide his arms upon the cross. This kind of Jesus love, this kind of commandment love, is not easy. It is hard. Because loving your neighbor and loving God with everything you've got means that we'll end up on a cross with Jesus. Let's not sugarcoat this. Loving your neighbor as yourself, loving God with everything you've got, opening your ears, your arms, and your hearts to love is not necessarily the recipe for what the world would call a happy life. It's so inconvenient having to love your neighbor and love God. It would be much easier to just listen to ourselves all day long. But listening Loving our neighbors and God is what Christians would call a good life, a life of love. So this week, listen deeply to someone with whom you disagree. Listen deeply to God when you're making a decision. And in that deep listening, you will hear the voice of Jesus the one who first loved us. Amen. As we now move into our time of prayer together, I invite you to offer any prayers, thanksgivings, and intercessions you might have into the comment section. 
Let us pray in the words our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining us for this time of online prayer and worship. Please know you are always invited to join us in person at 8 a.m. and 1030 a.m. on Sunday mornings for our services of Holy Communion. We would love to meet you in person and get you connected with the life of our church. And now a final blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.